ovary. Do still have the egg inside of them? This might be a growing follicle, or more likely than not, it's one that's already released its egg. Um, they want you to be able to tell the difference between primordial follicles, primary, secondary, and vesicular. Vesicular are also called tertiary, and they're also called graphan follicles. So all of our slides are listed as graphan. Now, this right here is a nice example of a secondary follicle. When you're looking at a secondary follicle, it should almost look like you have this steering wheel in the middle and then two little side pouches of what's called antrum, which is a fluid-filled space. Okay, this one's a little bit off to the side, but you can still tell that it's got one over here and one over here. Once we get to this, where we have this just huge fluid filled, this is a tertiary, a vesicular, or a graphan follicle, whatever you want to call it. So you can notice how much bigger it is, how there's not these two sides anymore. So this is secondary, and this is tertiary. We need to find a primary and primordial. So we'll just kind of look around. Doo -doo -doo. Here's another tertiary, another tertiary. So they have it has one big space. One big of... space, yeah, exactly. Here's a really small collapse secondary. <clears throat> they are. They're just really, really, really light. Let's see if we can get in. Ah, okay. These are primordial follicles. They're always located near to the edge of the ovary, and you can, they look like a cluster of grapes, okay? So these are the primordial. You can see they don't even really have clear nuclei, and if we can kind of scooch over just a little bit and hopefully find a cluster See the difference in size? Here's a primordial, and then here is a primary follicle. Okay, so they're going to be considerably smaller and obviously much less well formed. And notice that the primary follicle, which we're seeing here and here, these basically don't have any antrum or any fluid filled space around them, but now the egg is fully formed. So the actual um, thing which will be released is the egg looks very much like an egg. So we have primordial, primary, let's see what else we can find. What's that one? Tertiary. 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 So you get the idea. Okay, and good. If, and then the, the empty one is, is an empty, is released its egg? Yeah, it's and, and it should, now what they want you to be able to find is the corpus luteum. Corpus luteum would look like this actually okay it's now producing stuff it could be this one too it would be like a corpus luteum like structure it's already released the egg now what it's doing is producing hormones to maintain the pregnancy if it were to occur uh, what else do they want you to find okay they want you to be able to find a few things as we look within a follicle so i'm going to get back to one of those two then we'll just use this one since we're right here. They want you, first of all, to be able to find the oocyte, which is marked by this red boundary here. It's always going to have a dot in the middle. This is the oocyte, the egg. Um, they want you to be able to find first the zona pellucida. So if this inner red dot line marks the boundary of our oocyte, this clear one here is the zona pellucida. It's an area of connection between the follicle and uh, the egg. They want you then to be able to find the corona radiata, which is this, this layer of red cells out here. So we go oocyte, zona pellucida, corona radiata. These cells will actually travel with the egg. So the corona radiata travels with the egg, and that's really what the sperm have to burrow through in order to fertilize the egg. The, set, the egg wall is just one cell layer thick, but it has a bunch of follicular cells traveling with it. Now, the rest of these 
cells around here is what will turn into the endocrine structure. So this is what will collapse and form the corpus luteum. Okay, that would begin producing hormones. Okay, that's the female.